This is no big deal. This is no big deal. Actually, Justin Verlander says this is a very big deal that he pitched 101 pitches for the first time since 2019. And he threw a heck of a game. Yes, it wasn't quite a shutout, but Justin Verlander did what he needed to do to get the Astros to sweep the Mariners. And the Astros bats came alive. And we'll talk about this and more on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett. H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for us daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at H John Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. And thank you for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Make sure you give us a like on there. And go and check us out on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you make the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen. And speaking of first listen, it, it, um, it sure seems like that uh, Alex Bregman has made his uh, walk-up music something a little bit different to maybe change up his mojo or something like that. About uh, he's kind of struggled recently, so he changed his um, his song, his walk-up song to a um, to Blake Shelton's um, "God's Country," and he got a hit right away. And I believe he got three hits on a game. So. Maybe if you're struggling, you should just go ahead and change your walk-up music. And in fact, I saw this uh, interesting TikTok today where it's a Little League game, and um, or maybe it was uh, Pony League or something, but uh, they had uh, all the parents change all the kids' walk-up music. And um, uh, it was some of them were going up to Barbie Girl and all the different <laughs> stuff. So uh, I they're, saw that. They're, they're totally punking their kids. No, yeah, parents trolling the kids. That's uh, That's absolutely amazing i love that those are the kind of parents we need to be cheering on in youth sports because so many parents just out there they just they they've got it all they've got it they've got it all wrong they think it's about them they think it's about rings but when your kids are out there having fun and able to do that that's you know applaud you know um, i stand up right now and i just i i applaud them for being lighthearted in that youth sports can be very grueling for kids and that's what parents forget about today Justin Verlander hit the mound again today. He had a shutout until late in the game when he gave up a two-run home run, and that was the lone scoring that the Mariners did. That was the only scoring they did, Eric, the entire series. They were shut out up until that point, and I'm sure Justin Verlander was disappointed that he gave up that home run but they had seven runs. You know, when he got, when the Astros got to three runs or four runs, that wasn't the thing. When they got to five runs, Justin Verlander probably thought to himself, is that a five on the scoreboard? Wait, how do I act now? I'm not used to such run support. And it was good to see them get into action. You know, despite Jay, I mean, JB only had three strikeouts, but he didn't allow any walks. He allowed five hits. There was one early, I thought that should have been an error. Um, but was not to to Diaz. And then the second hit was a ball that just dove completely in front of Chaz McCormick. Chaz McCormick actually laid out to to catch it, but he stopped it. As he bounced off the turf, the ball bounced, and he saved it. That could have been a triple or an inside-the-park home run. I believe it was J.P. Crawford that hit it. So that was a great defensive play that no one probably will talk about um, after this game. But it's great. They got a sweep. The Mariners were in second place when they came into town. Now the Astros are sole possession of second place. And as we record this podcast, it's the ninth inning, and the Red Sox have a one-run lead on the Angels. So maybe when you're listening to this on Thursday, the Astros will be one step closer to taking back the, the West and be in first place. All right, let's take it back. Like uh, like the slogan was, what, in 2018 or 2019 or whatever? Yes. 
So anyway, uh, so going back to what you're saying about before we talk a little bit more about Justin Verlander's game, uh, bef- uh, the Astros have held opponents scoreless for 26 and one third consecutive innings before that seventh inning home run. Wow. The last time the Astros had a scoreless inning streak longer than 20 innings was in 2012 when they recorded 28 scoreless innings from uh, September 30th to October 3rd. So um, that's 2012, what, you mean the season of not the, yeah. the, the dreaded one hundred one of the 100 win loss seasons, but they got better. I'm sure. <laughs> yes. they got. It's, it's just a flesh wound. Yeah. It it's was just a flesh, just a flesh wound. wound. Like every single game, <laughs> it was a flesh wound, but the Astros starters are seven and two with a 2.25 ERA in the, the team's last 10 games. The Astros are seven and three in that stretch. And Verlander is a big piece of that overall on the season. I just did a little um, piece for, I don't know if it's for the crawfish boxes, but it's for the um, Detroit affiliate of the uh, SB Nation. Uh, They sent some questions over, but uh, they're asking me to predict who I think the Astros all-star starters will be. Uh, We can talk about that a little bit later. But so far this year, Verlander has allowed seven runs on on 19 hits four walks with 31 strikeouts in 32 and two thirds innings. He has a 1.93 ERA with a, uh, he's allowed a 171 batting average with a 0.70 whip. He is, um, he entered today with, um, he was first in AL and whip second in opponents, uh, batting average and seventh in ERA. So did he come it's like he didn't go anywhere. He he just went like I think I think Todd Callis or somebody said it on the broadcast today. It's just like he went away on a little vacation and then came back and everything's fine. You couldn't tell that this dude had Tommy John surgery because he looks like he's thrown better than he did, and um, before he had the surgery. So here's the deal. When you look at his numbers, so his his strikeout to walk ratios with the Astros in 2018, he had 35 percent K, K, K ratio to four um, percent, you know, based on balls. So that's about seven point eight four um, K to you know walks that led the major leagues in 2019. He was 35 percent with five percent walks. That's a seven point one four K to walk ratio. He led the AL right now, just early in the season, 30 percent K ratio to four percent based on balls, which is 7.0 um, K to, you know, walk ratio. There's no ranking there where he is, but he is going back to 2019 vintage Verlander. Remember when he came to the Astros, the season before 2017, 2016, he was, he was, it looked like he was kind of on the downside of his career. Mm-hmm. People talked about that when he came here, his averages and everything ticked up. It was like, oh, maybe that was Brent Strom. Well, now that he comes back and there's no Brent Strom, listen to his usage. His pitch usage in 2019, 50% four-seamer, 29% slider, 17% curveball, 4% changeup. 2022, 50% four-seamer, 31% slider, 18% curveball, and 1% changeup. He's using his changeup less. He's using his curveball a little bit more, his slider a little bit more. He's getting a lot of swings and misses. Um, and then the last stat I'll share with you um, is talking about his batting average against each pitch. In 2019, it was 229. Early in 2022, it's 119. His slider in 2019, a 119 batting average against. Slider this year, a little bit higher, but still 222, very respectable. And his curveball, 70, um, sorry, um, 111 batting average against this year versus 190 in 2019. Eric, most of his strikeouts have come off of his slider. And that's what he did in 2019. 127 of his strikeouts were off of his slider. Yeah, and definitely. So after the start on Wednesday, he basically said it was a big deal for him getting over that 100 pitch count. Uh, This was the the highest of the season was against the Arlington Rangers where he pitched. um, He threw 91 pitches. And so this was a big deal this first time since 2019. And he said this was a big deal. And uh, so um, we could talk a little bit more about what he had to say, but Scott service says up and down the lineup, we really didn't put too much pressure on him at all. And I think we've certainly seen a, a Verlander be better, but he pitched, he used all his pitchers pitches. He's not going to walk you. 
He's got a really good feel, and it's probably why he's headed to the Hall of Fame someday. So with that being said, you know, you want to halt, uh, head at, to the Hall of Fame with your wife, your mom, your girlfriend, whoever. Why don't you get something from Blue Nile? Yeah, so Blue Nile is fine jewelry, and it is given as a gift. And it's something that for Mother's Day, you really, if you want to get your mother something special, I highly recommend you go to Blue Nile. Why? Because it is fine jewelry, and it it is elegant. And you're like, whoa, you, and you look at it, you're like, it might be out of my price range. But you know what? They have options for every price point, and they have a number that you can call. They have people you can talk to. They'll walk you through, and they'll, they'll go over as many of the thousands of options that they have to find the right gift for your mom. She's special. She's meant the world to you. Why not show her that love by giving her something she can cherish, subtle elegance with a, with a diamond tennis bracelet? or a pendant or earrings, just something that you know your mother will love. Mark Mother's Day with something enduring, classic diamond set earrings, celebrating the special woman in your life on BlueNile.com. You can easily navigate thousands of fine jewelry. This is what I need you to do. For Mother's Day, give your mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Astros listeners get 50 per- $50 off, $500 spent. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. So use the code locked on. That's code locked on. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find forever peace and elegance like never seen before at BlueNile.com today. All right. If you want uh, to find something besides the Locked On Astros podcast to listen to, why don't you check out the Locked On Now podcast? Uh, he does a great job kind of putting all the nows together. Like Brett does a great job. Like, hey, Justin Verlander pitched a great game today. The Astros scored seven runs, yada, yada, yada. And you have all the exactly. different people around all the different podcasts. Just kind of you, you see the guys who win. Then you see all the guys saying, yeah, uh, this team sucked today, blah, blah, blah. But it's just a good way to see what's going on around the great sport of baseball. So go check out the Locked On Now podcast and make them your second li- um, listen after you make the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen. So um, definitely Justin Verlander uh, pitched a great game. And uh, it seems like that um, – they're going to stay in the six man ro- uh, rotation for a little bit. And it seems to be working. It seems to be keeping their arm fresh. And uh, this is what Verland had her say. Uh, he said, it's something that we've been trying to work on and build up smartly. Obviously we're in a six man rotation right now. And I'm just trying to get myself back to be able to be in that routine and throw that many pitches. I think that the next big hurdle is seeing how I respond from this. You never know what's going to happen. And, of course, he's talking about throwing 101 pitches. So right. um, now now we'll see how long they do this. But I, I think it's really helping not just Verlander, but all the starters. I mean, it's just kind of giving them the extra day of rest. Just uh, keep in mind that they had that uh, shortened spring training. And then you you had the first full season last year. So it's just like there's a lot of things that are going into this. But uh, the rotation is looking pretty good. The bullpen, with the exception of a few pitchers here or there, is looking pretty good. The offense is starting to hit really good. And so Dusty Baker, uh, here's what Dusty Baker had to say about that. Thoughts by Dusty. Here's Baker on sweeping the Mariners. We're still getting better. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You always say it with anticipation. I'm always waiting. I can't get used to you doing the short quotes. I never know if it's going to be a long quote or a short quote. And you like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm left hanging for more. It's like you watch the movie and it ends and you're like, that was the end. Yeah. But speaking of uh, Dusty Baker, uh, I mean, of course, uh, today we're recording this on May the 4th. And it's supposed to be May the 4th be with you. But uh, Sylvester Turner presented uh, manager Dusty Baker with a proclamation that May 4th, uh, 2022 is Dusty Baker Day in the city of Houston. So that's pretty awesome. I mean, I don't think they'll ever say Eric Heisman. It's the it's Eric Heisman Day in the city of Houston. So 
they could say it's locked on Astros Day, and we could do that, and we would ever forever be tied to the city of Houston. I would not be opposed to that, Eric. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but definitely, I know that um, it was uh, Dusty Baker did have a quote after the game, and they said, "Well, were you super excited?" Or uh, I think before today's game, were you super excited after you you got your two thousandth win yesterday? Uh, what did you do when you get home? And he said, "Oh, well, I went to sleep." <laughs> <laughs> of course, Dusty would say, I, went to sleep. I mean, awesome. with all I that excitement that. and uh, like just everything, I mean, who wouldn't go sleep, especially at that age? So, like, <laughs> I mean, that's not you said it, not him. me. I, I know, mean, I'm just I, w- I would too. I, I'm not that old either. I would Eric, so- Eric, Eric does that, and he's not that old. I'm joking. Right. <laughs> boomer vibes. You're such a boomer, Eric. You're such an old, old man. Old man vibes from Eric. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, shoot, talking about, talking about tired. I mean, was it was it last year? A couple times you would like, like when we had a late game, you would text me, um, "Are we doing the show?" <laughs> and then I would like wake up an hour later, and you're like, "Oh, it's okay. I already took care of it. I already did the podcast. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I already did the podcast. I promise you, I will not do that on air, not live, but on air and recorded for all the world to see. I will do my darndest to crawl up to this desk and get here to make sure we have a complete show. Okay, dokie. <laughs> are you are you are you saying you don't have much confidence in me? Are you saying that your confidence in me is like your confidence was with runners in scoring position before this game with the Astros? Because Eric the Astros went today 5 for 11 with runners in scoring position. I mean, that's been what's missing. Now, there weren't any home runs hit today. And remember the Astros and the Blue Jays lead the league with the most the, the highest percentage of runs that are scored via the home run. They did have a home run. They were robbed of a home run, but New York thought that the ball was not on top of the yellow line enough. Oh yeah. So, but it has to I looked up the rule. It has to if it hits the line and goes out, it's a home run. If it hits the right. line and comes back Bounce. in, right. I thought because the way it hit, the way it hit on the replay on Watch it on TV. Uh, you can see the ball hit the top of the fence and come back, and I thought they would call it. And, man, the fans were furious. But they still got a couple runs across and won 7-2. So it was non-consequential in the end. I know um, Alex Bregman raised his batting average to 247. Uh, his OPS is back up to a respectable 794 with a three-hit game. He scored two runs. Altuve. <sighs> Uh, I don't know if I even want to talk about this, but um, he got it. He fell the ball off of his um, private parts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was there was a. I've got to tell you this because I I, I think it's okay to say this on on air. Um, um, someone from Houston, a local Houston group, I won't say who it is because you can look at them and find it. They put a prayer circle. They're like, they're like prayers for the goat. And they did the candles. And in the middle of the candles was an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> but, and um, someone goes, someone goes, why are we praying for eggplants? And I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, um, yeah. uh, he did uh, foul a ball off his groin area. Let's just call it that. And, um, so he did stay in for that bat, and then he got a hit, but then he left after that inning, well, and Nico said, came came in to play defense for him. Go ahead. Someone said he's someone said he's already had all his kids because because they're all wearing Yankees uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, I digress. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. And in scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to make too light of this no, because this no. is a guy who's um, come back from an injury and. Well, no, uh, I thought he pulled. I thought he pulled something like yeah. the way and, until he they went showed down, the, replay, the way he went yeah, down. Yeah, the way he went down. You're like, what happened? Like at first, like did he foul the ball off his knee? No, he fouled the ball off right, right there. You know, and I was like, oh my god, that's not good. But you hate to see that because Altuve. I mean, he's been out for a while. He hates being out. He looked really good. Um, playing up in Oklahoma City with the with the Space Cowboys, I th- I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's a major thing, um, but that forced Nico Nico Goodrum into the game. Um, he played second, so you had you had the you had the middle infield of Goodrum and Diaz, 
um, with Pena getting the day of rest, you know, because 24 year old rookies need rest every once in a while, too, I guess. Um, uh, No, I'm just saying. Um, I just thought it was interesting. But, dude, like you mentioned, Bregman, Eric, he went three for three today. Uh, Michael Brantley. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, that. That was that's that's a really good game, and with those three hits, he had three RBIs, and and uh, Castro oh, broke a zero for eleven. Oh, slump. we oh I didn't realize he had only he only had one hit going into the game. Yeah, so it was he that, raised it was his that average. He broke up that no hitter. Uh, that, yeah, that he doubled. Game for he time. hadn't had a hit since then. Yeah, I was like, God, I didn't realize how much of a black hole his bat was. And someone asked me, they were like, "What is up with Castro?" And I said, "I don't know." Um, everything I've heard about Castro coming up through the league, um, I actually get this. I actually know someone who coached him and Mark Canna in um in in select ball out in the Oakland, um, you know, California area, and he said Jason Castro always had a bat that was like all the coaches wanted him on their team. He could always hit, and he said it was almost like after his first couple of years in the pros, he just struggled. And we've had minor leaguers talk to us about this before. When you go from high school, like on high in, in high school ball, you have the Friday night pitcher. In college, everybody's a Friday night right. pitcher. When you get to pros, it's the best of the best Friday night pitchers. And so, you know, hitting a baseball is not easy. And, and so, for whatever reason, he just hasn't been able to figure it out. And you hate that because Jason Castro is one of the better defensive catchers in the league. And I think he does have value on this team, even though he's not doing much at the plate. Yeah, you have to wonder if um, the value of having Nico Goodram and the Ms. Diaz is beneficial over having maybe a third catcher up here to kind of add some defense. Because you can't take away what uh, Martin Maldonado can add to you defensively. He can throw out some runners. He can frame, uh, do some good uh, pitch framing. Castro may not be as good defensively, but uh, he can. Uh, he's still a good catcher. He's still good behind the plate, yeah. Yeah. He can. He's normally the better hitter. He's just struggling this year, and I don't think he's playing enough to really get. And that time. probably has a lot more to do with it than this, like missing something when you're not in rhythm, dude. When you're not in sync. I mean, now you got to get up against a guy, especially someone like someone like um, Brass today, who he he couldn't hit the broad side of the barn. He was either hitting low yeah. or hitting high, um, and. He's erratic. He, he, he has well, he great was stuff. slider, but he yeah. was slider, 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 and he kept throwing balls. And then when he would throw a high fastball, it'd be way out of the zone. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why I dropped him from my fantasy team because I'm like I can't keep on having these high wall uh, high wall count um, numbers, and then the strikeouts will come because people are scared and they're gonna be like, oh, let me go and swing and everything, and uh, so. Yeah, definitely. So uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, AG1. Okay. So AG1 is this great supplement that I want you to hear about. And it's when I say supplement, it's not like that. This is like all your fruits and vegetables, like all your vitamins. Instead of taking like 40 different pills, you can take AG1, 75 quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and more to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all these things. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to try it. I'm gonna, at the end of this read, I'm going to give you where you need to go. I'm going to give you the special offer because I've been taking these things and they're amazing. They make, they, they give me energy they're good for you. And the taste is not bad. Like I was skeptical. Um, I don't, I don't drink things that are green unless it's like green Kool-Aid when I was a kid, but this tastes good. Um, I love it. I love the important source. It's, it's got, it's got vitamin D in it. It's got all the things you need. Um, the, the founder created this when he experienced a ton of gut health issues and he ended his complicated routine to recover that cost him a hundred dollars a day. It doesn't even cost anywhere near that. And they're actually offering you something for free. So it costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health. It's cheaper than than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in all-in-one nutritional um, value here. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash MLB network. Again, 
That is athleticgreens.com forward slash MLB network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today. AG1 Athletic Greens. Trust me, you won't go wrong. All right, Ian. Speaking of not going wrong, what about making a right bet? Who do you call? You don't call Ghostbusters. You call yeah. Bet Online. Bet Online. Sorry, I, I can't do the jingle. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting, sports, and information needs. The latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs. I mean, is John ja Morant actually going to beat Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors? Are the Memphis Grizzlies like the real deal? Um, will the Celtics overtake the Bucks, and will they be in the finals? I mean, it's a weird thing going on. The NHL, the Kentucky Derby is back. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information and live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All righty, before we get back to the Astros, what the heck happened with Madison Bumgarner? Um, <laughs> it looks like an umpire was massaging his hands. Uh, like, oh, here, uh, it looks like you got a little blister there. Let me go ahead and massage it for you, sir. Uh, well, is that what happened or what's going on? So, so when you go back and watch game footage, if you just search Madison Bumgarner, and I'm looking at it right now, explodes. What happens is I, I believe they're playing the Marlins and he basically, the Marlins pitcher comes off the mound and he kind of touches his hand like he does to see if it's sticky and he walks in the dugout. He grabs Madison Bumgarner's hand. If you're, if you're not watching this, I apologize. When he's holding his hand, like Madison Bumgarner's looking down at his hand, the umpire is giving him this death stare. Like he is daring Madison Bumgarner to look at him. He's not just looking at him. Like at first you think, well, maybe, maybe he's looking at something on his hat. No, he's like dead eyeing this guy. He's like, I'm going to kill you dead boy. kind of look. And, and then mad, and then mad bum looks up and he's like, looks at him like, why are you looking at me like that? And then he says something to Madison. I don't know what he said. And then he walks away. And the umpire says something to him, and Madison Bumgarner turns around and he said, you're full of blankety-blankety-blank or whatever in, in true Mad Bum form. And they have to literally pull him back. And it was almost like this umpire was trying to provoke Madison Bumgarner. I'm pretty sure Madison Bumgarner said something before that to piss off this umpire. But it was really weird, Eric. Like, I had heard about it, but I sit and watch it. I'm like, this ump is trying to start crap with him. Like, that is not the umpire's place. That's something you'd expect a player to do. In this situation, the umpire should have a little bit more control over his emotions. And had he not stared him down and done that, it was like he was trying to make a point. It's like, I'm going to prove my point to you. And I've had refs like that when I've coached, where they've said, we are going to make a point with you, coach, and we're going to call it every foul, and we're going to let you know how long it, it makes a game. And when umpires do that, it really does make them the bad guys. So... I wouldn't want to tick off Madison Bumgarner. That dude is a wild hair. He's like one upset umpire away from like going ballistic on somebody. I mean, I I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was a bad look for the umpires. According to Will Middlebrooks, uh, uh, Bumgarner said, take your effing time to umpire. And that's what made him get oh, tossed. Oh, see, and, was, okay. And okay. Uh, the umpire was mad because Bumgarner was arguing balls and strikes during that inning. And so that's why... He was a yeah, little bit okay. but, but literally, I have never seen an umpire go up to a player and dead eye stare them down until that player made a con. I, I con it was like he was, yeah, like, no, you just look creepy. I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, if, if y'all are listening, Eric is like dead eye in the camera. But that, that whole thing could have been avoided. Right. The umpire knows going to the game that Madison Bumgarner's vocal person. He 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 doesn't care. He literally was a professional rodeo rider, and that's like not allowed in his contract for like a year or two before anybody knew. I mean, this guy, this guy does whatever the hell he wants. You know what I'm saying? So I this stuff that's annoying to me. Watching pitchers come off the mound and umpires having to touch their hands like they're like they're five year olds. Let's make sure you don't have anything sticky on your hands so you're not so you have any illegal substances. It's like, what is this? Come on. This is such a Mickey Mouse rule anyways. It's so dumb. Baseball, here's what you do. You make your own stuff. 
that you deem as a legal substance so that players can get grip, but not too much grip. You stop screwing with the baseballs. You stop making two different baseballs and giving the ones that fly out of the park to one team and the ones that are dead to the other team. And how about have consistency and some integrity yourself? And then maybe you can go and get onto the pitchers for not using the right stuff. I just that that whole part of the game is a complete mess. And um, whoever's directing that part needs to be fired. All right. So the Tigers are coming in town. And in the yes. clash of suckiness, it was the Pirates versus the Tigers. And oh, I thought double- you meant the class. I thought you meant no. the Tigers and the Astros. Like, what? No. Uh, but in the, uh, it was a doubleheader today on Wednesday. Oh, wow. And um, so That's a lot of bad they, baseball. They, yeah, a lot of bad baseball. You remember, it's not seven innings of baseball anymore. It's actual nine innings of baseball now. Oh, wow. So the Tigers lost. Uh, I, one of they the lost, games they lost the second seven game to two right? of oh, seven uh, one of the games they lost seven to two they won the first game three to uh two so yeah. on the season they are now eight and 15 um so uh i know that that's kind of how they started they they started with a really bad record last year but then aj hinch kind of slowly got them um creeping up so this team is probably a little bit better than the record is going to show uh, this team is probably going to be something that, uh, especially with AJ Hinch coming back to town, this is going to be an interesting series because he always likes to um, play the, uh, come home and play the Astros. And so in game one uh, on Thursday, it's going to be Tariq Skubal, uh, who's mm-hmm. one and two with the 3.05 ERA. Um, with uh, 20 strikeouts versus Jose Arquiti with a two and one record with a 5.95 ERA with 13 strikeouts. Um, so they're not a lot of Tigers have faced Arquiti. Uh, the only one is Austin Meadows with his time with the Rays and Robbie Grossman with his time with the A's. There you go. Well, you know, Scooble, um, I listen to Castellani a lot when he talks about this, his Tiger breakdowns. Remember, he used to do Locked on Tigers. Now he's with Barstool, but um he he likes scuble stuff scuble has he has some good stuff when when he's on he's on so let's hope he's not on his game he's the um, lefty. Jose, he is he is a lefty and so um we'll see who the, who they roll out there um i guess we have yet to see whether um altuve is truly day to day or if he just comes back tomorrow feeling fine um that would be good for him to return but they've got robbie grossman former astro i remember when Robbie Grossman played with the Astros, I remember people telling me Robbie Grossman will never be an everyday major league baseball player. He's an everyday major league baseball player. And I would love to tell that person they were wrong, but for, for multiple reasons, I, I don't have the time or want to even look for that person because they were no fun when they were around anyway. So, um, but I remember that person saying that here he is Robbie Grossman um, hit the furthest ball in the last game, 374. I don't even know if it was an out or, whatever, but they got Spencer Torkelson, one of the most hyped rookies. Um, they also have um, Casey Mize, who I don't know if he's going to pitch against the Astros or not in this series, but you know, they've got some good young talent. They've got, um, they've got the electric Javier Baez, who, who is, who is definitely a, um, a lightning rod of a personality. They have Bernhardt behind the plate. who's actually hitting 295 on the season. Austin Meadows, he was 0 for 4 in their last game again or in their first game against the um against the Pirates, but he's batting 301. So they they have a couple guys with decent averages. The other guys, Miguel Cabrera when he plays, Mr. 3000 now coming to Houston. You know, Miguel Cabrera and Jose Altuve are real good friends. Um they're both from the same town um in in Venezuela. And so they're they respect the heck out of each other. Um, so if you're going to the game, you'll get to see a 3,000 hitter. You'll get to see A.J. Hinch. You'll get to see Spencer Torkelson, who is a great rookie. And the, all three of those people that I mentioned are probably going to lose. So um, just wave at him and tell him thanks for coming to Houston. Uh, okay. All right. So you're pretty confident there. So um, just oh, remember hell yeah, that. I'm confident, especially after the game today, Eric. I mean, really, seriously. I, I really am. I think, I mean, yes, I'm 100% confident in, in, in what I'm saying against the Tigers. Uh, just keep in mind that the Astros have zero hits against Scoobal in their uh, career. Uh, and uh, Michael Brantley specifically I mean, hasn't faced him, but uh, we do know uh, with a couple games this year that they he struggled against lefties. The Astros as a team has struggled a little bit against lefties. 
Uh, um, so this could be interesting matchup. Uh, so we'll see what lineup they do trot out there. But the Astros offense is starting to wake up. And uh, Dusty Baker's just got to decide at what point do, do you ha- can you continue to carry the catchers that are not hitting. It does help when the Bregman is starting to hit. It's, it does help that you are starting to hit a little bit. But what do you do with them? You can't. You're you're not going to cut Castro. You're not or, cutting. Well, if anything, like Nico Goodrum and uh, Led Diaz are the same player semi. In a way. Right, right. When Jake Myers comes back, yeah. that might change. I think I think and I think Jake Myers has to come back before before Goodrum or someone, but I just don't I mean, they've already eaten 12, 12 million on losing Baez, right? Um, are they willing to lose another few million? Because that's what they would lose if they got rid of Goodrum. They're not gonna yeah. do that to Diaz. I think they like Diaz too much. I think No, no, no. Me, Diaz is not going anywhere. Yeah. Diaz okay, is okay. the better player, is what I'm saying. But Nico Goodrum, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they will. I'm just trying to play devil's it advocate. To, yeah. So it, it would also have to be it would have to be someone from the pitching staff that would have to go to bring up a catcher. Um, no, they wouldn't know, do that. They're already shorthanded, right. so they would not so, take down a pitcher. So it has to be know, a hitter. So I, that's know, why I don't think it would happen unless they just decide. Okay, well, here's the thing, Jason Castro. Thanks for your time. Peace. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Corey Lee. Lately, um, is hitting like 394 in the last four or five games. Um, he's starting to heat up, starting to turn things around. He becomes a desirable option down the road if you're in a playoff run and need someone hitting in that spot. But by that time, I think the rest of the lineup is going to be on cue and in a groove where the catcher position will be less glaring. It's been so glaring, Eric, because this team has not been producing the runs. So it becomes a bigger issue. If this if this team was averaging seven runs a game, no one would be talking about it. So the moral of today's show is find somebody um, like that umpire who stares at you, uh, you like he stared at Madison Bumgarner, and then you'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. He looked like he was mad. I don't want someone staring at me like that. I get an upstairs like that um, without trying. From you know, I mean, because hey, dude, that's <laughs> hey, man, ask ask us married guys, dude. It's like, man, you don't you, you don't want your wife looking at you like that. I mean, he was he was like, did you fold the laundry? Kind of look. <laughs> Did you argue my ball or my strike? Really? Are you really going to do that to me? Are you really going to do that? I'm going to squeeze then, your hand. And, <laughs> and then and then Madison's head is bowed, and he's like, don't quit me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. That's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. We'll be back tomorrow talking about the Astros-Tigers victory, hopefully over the Tigers. And uh, that's all we got. And don't forget to check out Sully over the Locked On MLB podcast. And uh, my name is Eric Heisman. Uh, his name is Brett Chancy. And we are the Locked On Astros podcast, your team every day. Make us your first listen and go Stros.